So here we have acetaldehyde, which we're just going to call compound A, plus acetophenone, which is our compound B. And we can, we can add these together in all possible combinations. So we could have the enolate be B minus. So B minus would have a minus charge right here because that's compound B and that's our alpha position, right? We could have A minus, so that's compound A. If this is your alpha position, that's, that's here, right? And then we could have A minus react with A and B minus react with B. So a total of four possible um, combinations. Now when we add this first set together, we're going to form the following product. So remember, this enolate's coming over here, grabbing a hold of that carbon of the carbonyl now, and that's going to be an O minus, and then we'll protonate that. So our second step will be protonation. All right, so what we're going to get here is our phenyl group, our carbonyl, this CH2 that I'm circling is that CH2 right there now. And that's going to be connected over here to this bulleted carbon, which is that carbon right there. All right, that'll be an O minus. It gets protonated, so we're going to write it as an OH. And then there's an H that's here and a CH3. So I'm going to keep the CH3 in plane and write it down just like that. So we get this. Um, and then we also get its enantiomer too, right? So what would the enantiomer of that be? Well, we're just going to take that and we're going to put our OH on a dash there, okay? Looking down here below, here's our A minus reactant B. So this is going to come over here and react right there, right? And then we'll do a protonation to get that O minus to be an OH. So what that's going to give us here is our phenyl group. So you got your pH here. And that bulleted position is right there. So that'll eventually become an OH. And then I'm going to swing that CH3 up here. Right? And that's going to be connected down here to the CH2 and then to the aldehyde. Okay, And then we're going to get its partner which is that, right? Now we're gonna do the same thing down here below. All right, here's an A minus and an A, so here's your A minus coming over here and reacting with your A. So when we go through and do that, we're gonna have this bulleted carbon here is here. Now that'll be an O, H, and again, after we do that protonation, just like up above and up here, we, those are your protonation steps there. Um, and that's going to be connected down here to a CH2 and then to a carbonyl. Right? And then we get, it's an antimer. That. And then lastly, down here below, we have B minus and B. So we're going to swing around here just like so and grab that carbon, that'll give us our pH with our carbonyl, your CH2, and again that bulleted point is here, that's going to be your OH, got a methyl and then a phenyl there, plus the enantiomer there, so plus pH, pH, carbonyl, and then an OH right there. So the deal here is that you get eight products, too many. However, we can kind of control this if we're careful. So if we look down here below, here's an example that's used quite frequently in labs. So here you have benzaldehyde. So benzaldehyde has, um, has a carbonyl that can react, but it has no alpha H's. And so there's none right there, and there's no carbon on the other side. Acetophenone has no alpha H's here, and only alpha H's right there. So what happens is the acetophenone gets deprotonated, and then it reacts with benzaldehyde to give you your beta hydroxyketones, which then can become dehydrated, 
to form this trans alpha beta unsaturated ketone. That's your major one. So we don't get the phenyl group pointing up for reasons that we talked about before. So that guy we can kind of just toss out here. That's true, by the way, that acetophenone could react with itself. But at least we've limited the number of products by being more selective in what type of reactants we use here. So aldol cyclization can occur also, and it's actually a reaction that's used quite frequently, especially in things like steroid synthesis. So let's take a look down below at an example here. So here we have uh, one compound that contains two carbonyls. So what we want to do is we want to deprotonate this in such a way and form an enolate that we form a stable um, number of carbon cyclic ring, right? So we want to have five, six, seven carbons, not three or four or something, right? So notice that if we deprotonate it at this first position right here, that would give us an enolate that's a negative charge there that's then connected to that carbon. That would give you a three-membered ring. That's not good. If we deprotonate it here, though, we have a ring that has one, two, three, four, five carbons. That's better. So we do our deprotonation, and then we're going to swing over here, right? react at that carbon, and then come over and give us an O-, and then we're going to protonate it to give our OH. So here's your beta hydroxy um, ketone. Uh, we deprotonate it, and then we'll dehydrate that, and that will give us our final product over here. So you've done two things. You've, you've made a carbon-carbon double bond, and you've made a ring here. Now, biologically speaking, we can look at an example of this with steroid synthesis. So if we look at this structure, this structure has essentially one, two, three fused rings together. And if we can get that other carbon down there below with the minus charge to make a ring, then we have the basic backbone for a steroid. So steroids have this general structure. Okay. So with the negative charge here, this can come around. It can react right here, right through a second step. That oxygen would become an OH that then could be dehydrated to form an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. And when we do that type of reaction, that cyclization here, you make the steroid progesterone. So I'll put a link here. There's a really great, one of my favorite um, documentary series, Nova, on PBS. It has a really good episode on an organic chemist named Percy Julian. So um, I'll put a link to it, and you guys have to watch it. It's very inspirational.